Hi, I'm John Rigg, and this is the Robot Hut in Elk, Washington. Come on in. This picture you can see uh, when I was a child between 8 and 10 years old. And these are some of the robots that I had. And actually, this is a, a lineup of them right up here. And that's what started this uh, old Robot Hut collection. Uh, back in 1980, I decided I wanted to try to find all the toys that I had when I was a kid and so I started going to swap meets and flea markets and garage sales and actually found out there were dealers that sold just toy robots and I started all this madness. If you do not speak English, I am at your disposal with 187 other languages along with their various dialects. Well, building the robots came after the collecting the robots. In other words, I got hooked collecting first. And then I decided, wouldn't it be cool if I could have an actual full-size robot? And the, the most popular, the most used robot is Roddy. He's been in more films, movies, and TV shows than any other prop, really. He's more used. Tracking down blueprints was a problem. The first one I built it was just the best guess. And I used that first robot to kind of get my foot in the door with director William Malone that owns the original Roddy. So I sent him a tape. and. He was kind enough to call me back and tell me all the things I did wrong, which was a big help because we became friends and he would send me more information and I would do things for him and eventually I ended up with my full size work in Robbie, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. I've been trying to overload my power cells and burn out my primary memory banks. It's the Lost in Space robot from the TV show Lost in Space, not the movie. And this is the second robot that I built after Robbie in full scale. And what I learned from the Robbie one was it's as much work to build it wrong as it is to build it right. So when I did this one, I tried to track down all the blueprints and information I could possibly get my hands on before I did any work so I wouldn't have to keep redoing it and redoing it. This is a, a robot that was actually called Gort, but it's from the 1930s serial movie, Dr. Satan's Robot. They used the same boilerplate costume and a bunch of other a serial type films in the 50s as well. The larger one, you all recognize, also is named Gort, but it was from the day the Earth stood still in 1950. It's an eight foot tall robot, and uh, this one has a remote control head that tips down, and the visor goes up, and the light comes off and on. And it's actually uh, based off templates and measurements that I took off the actual fiberglass stand, and that was used in the movie back in the 50s. We have the three drones, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, drones one, two, and three from the movie Silent Running, that'd be 1971, that starred Bruce Dern. And in the film, because these had to walk and act, basically, they actually used amputees in them. They were walking on their hands. So each costume had to be very lightweight. They were thermoform plastic, had to weigh less than 20 pounds, so the actor could get up and walk around in them. These, of course, I didn't have to worry about it. There's nobody in there. These are mostly made out of wood and fiberglass, and they're quite heavy, actually. We've got the time machine. Well, granted, the time machine's not a robot, but it is the ultimate machine. If you were going to own just one machine, this would be the one you'd want to have. I've built a few time machines from the original studio blueprints. On the dish design, for example, they went for the 360 different little post pins around the perimeter. It's a non-repeating pattern to represent the days of the year. They used an actual early 1900s, 1907, thereabouts, barber chair in the film. This one I actually had to hand make because there are people that collect barber chairs. So if I wanted to get the actual barber chair for this, it would have cost me about 15000 just for the chair. So I went ahead and built this one up myself. The original prop, by the time they got done doing post-production for the film, they needed the time and date, if you've ever watched the 1960s version of the time machine, to move on the screen. And that was all actually done in stop animation. So they would slice the console in half, re-projected the time and date information frame by frame, like you would a cartoon, basically. This is basically a life cast of me. I've got my face up there was kind of inspired by RoboCop, so I did kind of a robo-rig kind of a deal. Everything about it is mixed-media sculpture. For example, other than the live cast face, what we've got is a, a baseball helmet, an air filter. We've got the tank cover off a Goldwind motorcycle. You've got burner plates off a stove. You've got right-angled dryer vents. You've got large mixing bowls, light globes, toilet plungers, PVC pipe, and dust busters for feet. 
Over here we have uh, R2-D2, who's on a motion sensor. Let me walk by here. We've got a full-scale Maria from the movie Metropolis in the 20s. I didn't build Maria. I did trade for her, but I needed Maria because it was the first movie robot. <laughs> This is uh, Johnny Five. It was in two different movies. First one was called Short Circuit, and the second one was called Short Circuit Two. But the Johnny Five robot was a favorite of mine in that a lot of it really was robotics. As far as being a complicated prop, I mean, very few things have come close to having this many servos in this small a package. So I was always really impressed with the facial expressions and everything it do. So when I built mine, and it took me four years to do it, three of them just tracking down information and one year building, I wanted to capture as much of that as I could. So in this head alone, there are over 23 servos. The track sections do work because I had to drive it from my workshop out here to the robot hut down the road. So we're coming up on the Robbie Jeep here from Forbidden Planet. And again, I built the Jeep from the Studio Blueprints. And it's actually an electric power vehicle. 36 volt system. There's a baggage handler cart underneath there. It actually has enough power to burn rubber. And I've driven it up and down the road quite a few times. And the last time I drove it, I crashed into my mailbox. So I decided I'd quit driving it at that point because it's too hard to repair. So I just brought it in here and parked it. In the movie, it's supposed to look like Robbie is controlling the Jeep, steering it and driving it. Actually, the passenger side has all the controls, and you do them all with your foot. It's electric steering. You turn left, turn right. All that stuff was done by the person on the passenger side during the film. Over here, we have a robot from a movie called Target Earth from the 50s. And it's, it's billed as being the scariest robot movie ever made, and it really isn't and wasn't. It was just a very low-budget movie where Earth was supposed to be invaded by a whole race of robots, but they only had one costume. They only had the one robot. And the guy's eyes were behind this floor vent. It was actually a 10-inch floor vent like you'd have in your house. So we knew the robot wasn't 15 or 20 foot tall, but it was supposed to look like it was. So on the publicity shots, they'd always have the robot standing on boxes and the actors squatting, so they would look about this tall compared to the robot. And they'd always shoot the robot with the right lens and from a low angle so it would look bigger than life. So this is the Machine Man Band. It's two uh, seven foot tall robots that I designed and hand built. They're all under computer control. In fact, here's a whole list of all the instruments that are involved in the robots. There's 48 organ pipes, 24 concert bells, a ride cymbal, a craft cymbal, a high wood block, a low wood block, 16 sleigh bells for the Christmas songs, tambourine, cowbell, triangle, snare drum, and bass drum. We play over 140 different songs, and right now I think we'll do a little putting on the Ritz. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your tour of the Robot Hut.